Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel, another match day preview. Previewing the old cliched relegation six pointer, it's 20th versus 19th in the Premier League, it's Fulham versus Huddersfield Town. We're back at, back in action at Craven Cottage again, taking on Huddersfield in what is a huge, huge game for both teams really. And in my opinion, whoever loses this game will go down. It's one of them games, especially at this time of the season, where not, neither side can afford to lose it. Both sides have had a bit of a, a disappointing campaign so far, and probably both sides probably expected a little bit better going into this game, and would have liked to be in a much more healthy position than probably what they've expected. Obviously, Huddersfield, we went above Huddersfield on Saturday thanks to that that point uh, against Wolves, and obviously Huddersfield slumped to the bottom after their defeat to uh, Manchester United at, at Old Trafford. So moving into so before we get into this quick reflection, as always on the previous game mentioned in Wolves, a lot of there was a lot of fallout over social media regarding the game, regarding some players. So I just wanted to uh, express my opinions and try and uh, see what and just explain what what I think of it all. And I thought we on on the whole we, we played well. I think in that first half we created a number of chances. Mitrovic he said he felt like crying after the game after missing Fields eight chances, but I think Ranieri hit hit the nail on the head in this press conference. It's the life of a striker. You go through these type of spells where. You get these chances, and the ball sometimes doesn't go in, and you just got to keep. You got to got to keep going. You got to grit your teeth and just bear it and go through it. You know, if you get one of them chances again, sometimes with a striker, it's always the the funny ones that go in, the ones that you don't really know so much about, off the kneecap, off your chest, and then straight away once that goes in, the confidence is restored. He's a fantastic player, as Mitro. You know, he's a goal scorer, and I'm sure his goal drought will end pretty pretty soon. He's one of them players who's always in the right areas with the right service. He'll he'll, get, he'll definitely get the goals again, and he'll definitely get back on that that on that goal trail, which will be uh, which will be good for him as well. Because I know he's he's struggled for form um, in recent weeks, but Ranieri believes in him, and definitely I think once that for, once that goal goes in, I do fancy him to score on Saturday as well. I think it's a perfect opportunity to get back on that on that goal trail, as I said. So moving back into the game, as I said, we created a number of chances in that first half, but as I said, the frustration was we didn't put them away. Obviously, we went into that at nil nil. Wolves had a few half chances in the first half, and on the whole, I felt the game lacked quality really from both sides. Fought in the final third, both sides were a bit indecisive really, and just didn't really have that killer instinct to put the ball away. Obviously, we had to wait till I think 75 minutes for the goal. Scrappy goal, but I'll take it. It's from a set piece. We got it into the box. Mawson flicked it on, as we all know, and then Dennis Adoy changed um, Patricio. And Cessna was there to mop it up. And then we, we let a sloppy going, really, I think. Looking at some of the defending, you could have probably, you know, it was, it was if you're being picky, you could have complained about a few certain things in that in that little phase there leading to the goal. But in, at, in the, at the end of the day, I thought we was, I thought the performance was good. I'd have taken a draw at the start of the day. If we can get three points on Saturday, that's even better. One small thing I'll take from that, I think Cessna should start over Scherler. I think when he came onto the pitch, we seemed to raise our game. I thought he added a bit more pace and fluidity down at left-hand side. I didn't think Scherler was that slow. In the second half, when he went through on goal, I can't remember who played the ball through. I think Ryan Bennett outpaced him. And Bennett's not the fastest player in the world. And Scherler looked like he was running through treacle. And he's only 28. Come on, he surely had lost about, what, a yard of pace. He surely isn't that slow compared to what he once was. I know he's probably not the same player he once was, but I think he deserves to, to be dropped onto the bench. And I think Cessna was more than... That's definitely proved that he, de he deserves to start, I think. I think AK played quite well as well. He's... Uh, I've been under a lot of criticism from a lot of supporters, including myself, but I can't fault his effort, and I do think that he is trying his best. And he, he was a handful on, sat on, on I keep saying on Saturday. Boxing Day felt like a Saturday to me, so I'm going to keep referring to it as that. I mean, um, it, but yeah, as I said, Kamara was a problem on Boxing Day, and he's definitely a player who will flourish. But moving into the preview now, Huddersfield, currently sit at the bottom, as we all know. They've played 19 like us, only won two games like us, drawn four, lost 13, with a goal difference of minus 22. Matthias Jorgensen, um, Huddersfield's top goal scorer, a centre half, who's their top goal scorer, is quite worrying. I don't think the Poitra nor Steve Munier have scored a goal this season. I might be wrong, but I don't think they have, which again is alarming. And I do think, from what I've heard, that Huddersfield will be in the market for a striker come January in the in the hope that they can aid their survival push. Most assists for uh, Huddersfield Town is Steve Munier with three assists, so he's definitely proven he can create chances. But when the ball comes from the box, he's not been a uh, most prolific and more or, or clinical at all, really. Huddersfield only scored 12 goals in 19 games this season. I do believe that is the least in the league, I think. I'm, you might have to double-check that. I do believe it is. And they have had struggles in front of the goal this season. They, don't, they do create chances, but as I said, just that killer instinct, it's just, it's just not there for them. And that's probably why they're bottom. Three clean sheets as well to go alongside that with 34 goals conceded. No new injuries for them at all. No fresh injury problems apart from the most notable absentee for Huddersfield, which is Aaron Moy, who is out until the new year. I think it was a groin problem, I think it was. And he's, he's going to be a big miss for them. He's the heartbeat of their midfield on his days, a quality player. And it's a positive for us, of course, but 
They've still got a number of a number of good players and players like Phil Billing, who's got a wonderful long throw. And I watched the game against Man United quite closely against you know, when for Huddersfield in Huddersfield's defeat. And they're a threat from the set piece. Obviously, they got their goal. They they use the long throw. They use you know they use the height they've got in their side to their advantage. Players like Jorgensen, Chris Schindler, De Poitra, Mounier. They're big, tall, physical players. Even Terence Congolo as well, and Phil Billing as well from set pieces. He's got as I said the long throw. They they work hard on their set pieces, and I, I I do believe that will be tough. We did face a long. We did come up a few times against a long throw on Boxing Day. Courtesy of Ryan Bennett for Wolves, and we dealt with it quite well. And I do think um, Phil Belling's got a better long throw than what Ryan Bennett had, so it's probably going to go a little bit further than what Bennett's did. But also, I think we can, we're more than capable of standing up to this. It's going to be a different type of test. It's going to be a more direct physical test. I think Huddersfield will look to try and get the ball wide and into the box quite quick, especially when you've got two physical strikers. Whoever they deploy in De Poitre and Mounier, it's going to be uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a tough day for our three centre halves. If we do stick with the five back formation, which we have done, and it's been quite effective, but by all centre halves will be in for a tough game. Moving on top, quickly on the side note, referee for this game on Saturday is Kevin Friend. The only no, the most notable game he's refereed for us was uh, about four years ago when uh, we had that crazy game at home against Millsborough. We it was our championship first season in the championship. We stayed up. When we went 3-1 up against Wolves, they pulled it back to 4-3. Ross McCormack got that late winning goal. And that's probably the most controversial game he's ever he's probably uh, refereed for us. And that was a great game in the end. It was really good. Middlesbrough season derailed that year. I think they went on to lose the playoff finals or to Norwich, I think it was. So a little bit of history there for Kevin Friend and, and refereeing Fulham games. Moving on to our side of things. The only, uh, only really injury that we've got is uh, Frank An and Frank Zambo and Gisa is still out with a knock. I'm not sure when he'll be back, but he hasn't been seen since the... Red card against Man United, which I felt still to this day was quite soft. However, we've still yet to lose. A, moving into the stats breakdown, top the stats part of this uh, preview, we've still yet to lose a home match in the Premier League against Huddersfield. Obviously, we lost away at the John Smith, but we've yet to lose a home match against Huddersfield in the Premier League, winning two, drawing one. But this is our first home meeting at Craven Cottage since April 1952. So you know you can't look at things too much in that in that respect. Huddersfield's reverse 1 0 win was their first victory in 12 league encounters against us. So it just shows that we're one of their bogey teams, I think. Craven Cottage hasn't been a happy hunting ground for Huddersfield. I do believe the last was it was in their promotion season when we beat them 5 0 at, um, at, at our ground. We beat them quite easily in the end. And another result that would be fantastic for us. But it's not been a happy hunting ground for Huddersfield for the Terriers. They do struggle at Craven Cottage. I remember Lassa Vegan Christensen scored a wonder goal against them. I think when he, he nutmegged Mark, Mark Hudson in the driving rain, then chipped it over Alex Smithies, and then that was a, that was a good goal. And Ross McCormack scored an absolute belter as well late on in that game. It was pouring down at Craven Court, which was a horrible day. But two good goals really lit up that performance. And I think we won, was it 2-1, I think it was. I think Joel Lynch got an equaliser for Huddersfield in the second half. Off the top of my head, I think it was. And I think we went on to get, it was either 2-1 or 3-1 that day. I can't really remember. But all I remember was the driving rain, 2-1 the goals for us. And it was under Kit Simons during that time. when we was going through a bit of a difficult, sticky situation. But... We'll leave that season back in the past, really. And for them, we've also only lost one of our last 10 home matches against Huddersfield, winning five and drawing four. So the stats all suggest that this should be a home win. But it's never as easy as that being a Fulham fan. As we all know, we do make the slightly more simpler things hard. And it's going to be a tough game. I don't think Huddersfield are going to be any slouches at all. There won't be a rollover. No, no way, no, nothing about that suggests that they will. David Wagner will definitely have them fighting. And if I was Claudio Ranieri, I'd go into the um, on training maybe tomorrow. I'd sit him down in in, in whatever they have, like a little, like room, watch a video, and I'd put the the reverse game when we got beat one nil. And in fact, just just to motivate them, if that's not motivation to go out and put a better performance in, because the reverse fixtures are shambles. We didn't look like we just didn't care, did we? It was one of the, it was that miserable Monday night. We didn't look interested, and I just hope for that. Forgot, you know, I just hope that we can go there on Saturday and put another good performance because. I'm happy with how Ranieri set up. I think he's got that that set up very nicely. He's settled on the formation now, a five-back formation with the wing-backs going forward, three settled centre-halves, and it seems to be working. And all we need to do now is really convert these chances and turn them into goals, and we can start really push up this table. I do believe we're getting more, we're solidifying defensively. Obviously, the Newcastle was a clean sheet, went 85 minutes against Wolves without conceding a goal. So it's steady progress, and... I'm generally quite happy with the way things are going at the moment. If we can get a win here, it'll be huge because Arsenal away on New Year's Day, I don't think we're going to get much then. And we've got Burnley away, which will be a huge game as well. So points are at a premium at the moment and we do need to try and take these three points because if we don't, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be pleased. It would be worrying, but 
I think we've got enough to oversee to, to, to go past others field. I do believe we can. I do think they'll score a goal, but my prediction will be 3-1 to Fulham. I just think we might have a little bit more quality. I'm not underestimating, I'm not underestimating Huddersfield whatsoever. I, I do admire Huddersfield. I think they're a great team. They've been a bit unlucky this season, and there will be a, 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 an absolute tough challenge for us, no doubt about it. They'll be physical. They'll work the space as well. Alex Pritchard floating around in, in behind the... I think it's, they'll probably start Steve Mooney, I think they will. And he's, he's a dangerous player on his days, Alex Pritchard as well. We know him very well from his days in the Championship with Brentford and Norwich. But it'll be a tough game, as I said. But I do believe if we can get that first goal, the morale will lift, the crowd will lift. And the atmosphere on Saturday, it wasn't... I don't think the atmosphere on Saturday was fantastic. There was lots of... You know, the game wasn't great either. And I do believe that when the game isn't great, sometimes the, the atmosphere can sometimes have an effect on that. And when we got the goal, the atmosphere did lift, which is great. And the supporters, we're, we're doing well. I think from a supporters' perspective, we're, we're there supporting the team each week. And we've just got to keep going because I do believe we've got the right man in charge that I've kept saying. And this would be a huge win for us in terms of really getting some momentum going into, into January where there will be a few changes. And I do believe there'll be a, a couple of casualties in terms of notable players who might leave. But it's just the way football goes. I and mean, we've just got to keep on grinding, keep on playing to our, to our strengths. And I do believe that win will come. If you, did, if you did enjoy this preview, guys, as always, hit a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new as well. That would be awesome. Comment your predictions in the comment section below as well. Always like to hear everybody's comments. And I'll be back Saturday, match day video coming Saturday as well, which will always be good. So, yeah, take care, guys. See you all Saturday night after the game. Take care. See you soon.